God wants you to prosper, not somebody else, not someone down the street, but he wants you to prosper. He promises to be our exceeding great reward. God has a great plan for you. Third John, verse two, it says, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Well, hello, hello, hello. I am Dr. Shanta Haynes with Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, and it is my privilege and my honor today to bring before you Miss Frazelma Lynn, who is just an awesome person in and of herself. One, because she's a child of God, but two, she has been an educator for over 30 years, and she is bringing some information that is so important, especially during this month for our mothers, but it's for all parents. And I'm excited that we're going to get an opportunity to talk about what you need in order to be able to move forward, communicating well with your, your children, going through the different seasons. We're going to talk about a lot, but before I jump into that, allow me to introduce you to Ms. Frazelma. Ms. Frazelma, it is my pleasure to have you with me today. Hello, Dr. Shante. It's wonderful to be here. I am honored to be here today. Well, it is my pleasure. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to my audience? Well, hello, everyone. Um, as she told you already a little bit about me, I am a retired teacher and school administrator. I am a cancer survivor and thriver, um, cancer in my face, and they removed half of it and reconstructed it. And God is still using me because along with my career, I also have been uh, a parent liaison. So I have taught parents um, for at least 20 years, and that's what I do now. I teach parents. I have been a single parent. I've been a married parent. I've been a divorced parent. I've been a co-parent. Then I remarried and became a step-parent. Along the way, I became a godparent, and now I'm a grandparent. So trust me, I know that parenting can be difficult, but we can work together and get through all the struggles and have an amazing parenting experience. Amen. I really like that in my original talk with you. You are the parents coach. How's that? I am. <laughs> and they need to come see you, but you guys are going to get an opportunity to hear some of her wisdom as we go through this particular section. It is my privilege to even talk about this during this time. I know that mothers, we are the nurturers in the home. We're the ones that are sacrificing quite a bit. We're sometimes working and overwhelmed and just inundated with so many things because we want so much for all those that we love. But we need assistance as well. And we need someone to come alongside and help us to get to the point that we need to be in order to do what God has called us to do, do it well, do it efficiently, do it effectively, but do it to the best of our ability. And sometimes we need a little bit of help. So a coach is always a good thing to have. It definitely is. So I'm gonna start off by a scripture that we all know when it comes to our children and what we're doing with them. And that is in the Proverbs where it says, train up a child in the way that he should go so that when he's old, he will not depart from it. And that's the 22nd Proverb and verse six. So Ms. Frazelma, I definitely want to get you in here on this particular issue. Let me ask you first and foremost, one of the big things that we deal with with our children is communication. Yes. How do yes. we communicate well? with so many different levels. We've got the millennials, we've got the Gen Zs, we've got the preschoolers, we've got the empty nesters, we've got all of the gamut. So why don't you just give us, pour us a little bit of your wisdom, if you would, so that we might be able to glean from what you get an opportunity to tell your parents. And we have to study our children well enough to know them. And that's something, studying them, knowing exactly how to show them that you get them. Mm -hmm. 
What happens with us parents, we're so busy. You know, um, as Dr. Shante said earlier, especially moms, we're trying to do everything. We're trying to juggle all things and make all things right for everyone. Um, and in, in doing all of that, sometimes we fail to study those children. And when you study them, you know which child needs for you to just say good morning and give me a hug, you know, or you know which child is moving faster than his mind can go. And you just need to say high five, hey buddy, and, he, and they're good. But you cannot use a one size fits all for the children. Every child is different regardless to age or anything. Every one of them will be different. So I would tell any parent that I'm working with, when you study your child, you have to show your child that you get them, you know? You get their little quirks and their little differences and their little mood swings and you get them. The best thing we can do to communicate better is always listen always listen because sometimes our children are talking to us without words and we have to understand their body language we have to know something about their mood swings we have to look in their eyes you know i know we're busy yes we're busy but we have to stop for a moment with cooking dinner and just look in their eyes you know when you listen to them you get a little bit more about them, even when they're not saying a word. Wow. I mean, you said a lot there. We're going to unpack some of that. But at the very beginning, I would say we as women want to be heard. Mm. We want to be understood and we want to be appreciated. And as a mother, usually we don't feel that we're getting that. But what I hear you saying when we talk about communicating with our children and studying them is that we need to let them know also that we see them, we understand oh, yes. them. Yes. And we appreciate yes. what they bring into our lives. Yes. So in studying, just in the studying, what would you suggest that we do that might be something that we're doing that we need to do differently in this day and age? How can we study better? Of course, in this day and age, we parents have to put down our devices, our cell phones, our tablets, our laptops, our this or that. Okay. And I know that we're trying to be, um, you know, efficient and but we have to put down the devices. There is a picture that I saw and the mother is holding her baby and she's on the phone. Now, she stopped the baby from playing with a phone because she's trying to decrease screen time. But with him in her arms and with her being on the phone, all the baby had to do was turn his head and he's still watching, you know, still getting in screen time. So one of the things we have to do is start decreasing our screen time. So when we're at home, we have to, you know, schedule a time for us to turn them off, you know, set them aside for a few moments. Yeah. One of the stories um, that I like to tell parents, this is a true story. This was a parent that I had worked with. Um, I actually worked with um, one of her children when I was an administrator. My husband and I went out for breakfast one morning. This has been about four or five years ago. Um, we walked in the restaurant and she was there with two of her younger children. So she was on the phone and of course I didn't interrupt her, you know, that would be rude and disrespectful. I just waved my hand because we had to walk right past her table. We sat there and we ordered our food. They brought our breakfast. We ate breakfast, finished up, talked for a few minutes, my husband and I. And when we got ready to leave, she had not been off the phone the entire time. Wow. 
So when we walked back past her, I, I leaned over and I said, can I say something for just a moment? And she told the person, okay, hold on just a moment, you know, and she put the phone down to the side. And I said, it's so wonderful that you brought these babies out for breakfast. She said, oh, yes, ma'am. I was trying to, you know, spend some quality time with them. I said, but do you realize you ignored them the entire time? Wow. And she stopped and thought and she went, oh, Miss Lynn, thank you for telling me that. She said, I didn't even realize. I said, quality time means you have to pay attention to them. You have to talk to them, mm -hmm. you know? And so we've got to do that when it comes to our devices and, and our busy schedules. It's not hard to study them, but you do have to pay attention to them to study them. And the, the, the last thing that I would say is we have to stop trying to save them every move they make. Mm. Um, we need to allow them to learn coping skills. We need to allow them to figure out a few things. I'm not talking about dangerous things. Of course, come on, that's just you know, a common part of, of any of us being human, we're not going to put our children in danger. But small things, um, we will jump up and just do it for them instead of watching them, studying them, trying to see, will they figure it out? Will they try? Do they just need motivation and encouragement? You know, do they just need... Um, you're almost there, you're almost there. Don't give up now, you've almost done it. And you, it just takes time and we have to watch what they do. Just pay attention. Oh, that is so good. So what I hear you saying is mom, you gotta breathe. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you can't try to fit it all in, take no. that superwoman cape to the clinic mm. and leave it there because it's not going to work. If you're going to study your children, you have to be willing to be present oh. in the moment, be aware of what yes. they are doing, listen to them, see how they handle. I mean, when you said none of the children are the same, I've had three girls, none of them were the same. I've got one that is all into the math, that is a left brain thinker that is going to identify everything that she's going to do and checklist queen, if you would. Mm -hmm. High mm -hmm. distance. Then I have one that is on the artsy craftsy side. And, you know, time means absolutely nothing. <laughs> it's yeah. like, okay, I just want to be creative. But we have to recognize that they're vastly different, but exactly. God created them the way he created them. Yes. And yes. when that passage says, train them up, in the way that they should go, mm. I think hit the nail on the head. We have to study them to know how to train them. But then you turned around and added another twist to this. And you said, not only do you need to be aware, you need to breathe and you need to pay attention and study them, but there's something different about each one that you can't just pigeonhole them. No, no, this is not pussy cutter. Yes, they're not cookie cutter. I love that. I love that. So can you expound a little bit more on how we can then determine where our child might be or what we might need to do a little bit different with them? Based on your child's age, and I know parents, you know, we have tender hearts, um, but based on your child's age, you would be amazed at their answers if you would just ask them. So here is a question. Most of us, especially mothers, we are trying to do everything because we know, you know what's needed for the child to have a happy life, you know? And most mothers will say that I, I want my child to be happy. Okay. But out of all that you do, if you are slightly missing the head of that nail, 
you're not getting anywhere. You're spinning your circles, going through the motions, but getting nowhere. Okay. Sometimes we have to ask them, what is it that you would like for me to do differently as your mom? Hmm. You know, I love you, right? Do I show you? Sometimes they'll say, I know you love me, but I wish you wouldn't. Or when I ask you to help me do this, will you please just find time to help me? You, will, you would be amazed at the answers you will get um, when you just ask. Just ask. Yes. I mean, I love that. And you talked about the different ages too within that, that as they grow, as they go through those mm -hmm. different seasons, there's something different. And that's why mm -hmm. I'm really excited about the fact that you're doing coaching for parents because, you know, Dr. Spock wrote a book years ago, but he didn't have any children. <laughs> or that was at least the little joke we would say, like, who's this, kid? who's this person writing this book? My child's not following this. But you have the experience. You have six children. You six have adult children. Six adult children, eight grandchildren. Yeah. So you you've expanded the gamut of I've had the baby, I've had the preschooler, I've had the elementary mm -hmm. school student, I've dealt with the preteens, I've mm -hmm. dealt with the teenage years, I've gone through the adulthood and having that big switch. And that's another one we could probably talk about too. Yes. To even bringing in the grandchildren and how I deal with them as grandchildren, grandparents. So yes. you have, you have a wealth of information. Tell, tell me a little bit about what you provide to a parent as they're going through your coaching program. It's communication transformation. But can yes. you tell us what are some of the outcomes that someone is going to receive by participating in this? Yes, most definitely. They will learn the skills. So they will have a more effective way to communicate with each of their children. They will unlock their child's emotions so that they can better understand them. And the third thing will be they will learn how to build a bridge of trust with their children. And the trust goes both ways so that the child can truly trust the parent and the parent can trust the child. Now, who would not want that? I mean, that's awesome. I'm really excited about that because I'm sure you've been doing this for years and it's a proven system. Can you give us an outline of what they're going to get within this program that you're doing? Yes, the, the first part of this is knowing how to speak your child's language mm. because you have to be able to speak their language to understand where they're coming from. That's that get them part. Then uh, another, the next outline, the next bullet will be um, the single most effective way to relieve family stress. Okay. Because everybody at some point is stressed in the family. If, if we're working too hard and not paying attention to the children, don't have time for the children, they're stressed just yeah. like we are. So we have to learn how to relieve family stress. Mm -hmm. And then that last bullet will be revealing effective ways to express emotions. Now, because most of us as parents, we don't know how to express our emotions. So we'll learn that and then learn how to be sure our children know it's a safe place to reveal their emotions also. Oh, that is absolutely fantastic. Now, this is a 90-day program, but you definitely need to get on Ms. Frizelma's list. You need to know who she is. And in knowing who she is, all the resources that she has, she brings a wealth of information. I'm excited about this communication transformation. This one's for parents. Now, and I know you're probably thinking I need communication transformation within my marriage. 
on my job and every place else, but this one's specifically for parents. So we'll if you are a parent that. that is truly ready to have an amazing parenting experience, yes. you want to get on with Ms. Frizzell Malin. I am so excited. We talk about God loves you and he wants you to have an ex absolutely fantastic experience. He gave you those children for a reason. So yes. enjoy them and enjoy the journey. And if it happens to be Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day if you're listening. If it's not, it's still Mother's Day at some point in time because each and every day you are to be celebrated. Thanks yes. so much, uh, Ms. Rizelma. It is truly a pleasure to talk with you. And it's just so easy. We just have conversations with Jesus, as you say. I love exactly. it. I love it. All right. You got to breathe, ladies because you know life goes by so quickly, you wanna be able to be there for them. Uh, I'm so appreciative of the time that we've had together, um, listening to each other. And I hear your heart, your heart is to help as much as possible and yes. to allow our parents to really enjoy the journey. So yes. I don't know, do you have a, is there a title to your program? Yes, the program that I'm coaching right now it's mm -hmm. called Communication Transformation. All right, then. I'm loving yeah. it. Communication Transformation so that you can have amazing kids with less frustration, a calm household, and yes. an enjoyable parenting experience. I am absolutely loving it. Well, it's Dr. Shante Haynes. Once again, it has truly been my pleasure. I'm with Heart to Heart Truth Ministries. Here with my featured guest, Ms. Frazelma Lynn. I am so excited about what she has to offer you. Make sure you check out the links. Make sure you go back. You like, share, subscribe. You make sure you find her. You get those links. You do what you need to do so that you can have not only an enjoyable parenting experience, but your children are going to be successful as well. Again, I want you to put feet to your faith and enjoy life so that you can walk victoriously. Dr. Shante Haynes, it's been my pleasure serving you today. Have an absolutely fantastic day. Hi, I'm Dr. Shante Haynes with Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, and I'm your biblical money management expert and strategist with over 20 years of proven results. From one client who took one tip out of my book and saved $2,400 a year to another that was on a fixed income and is now going to be financially free for over six years. I'm excited about what I bring to you. What you don't know is that after 29 years of marriage, I got the rug pulled out from under me when my husband asked for a divorce. I was dumbfounded, anxious, and unsure of what my financial outlook was going to be. Now, I know how money works and I've coached many but I didn't think in my wildest dreams that this would happen to me. After all, I'm the prayer warrior, leader in the church, professor, speaker, and I have almost as many degrees as a thermometer. But what I learned after navigating my journey is that 90% of the women devastated by divorce or death ended up like I was, hiding in the shadows, wanting the life that they sacrificed so hard for, and they wanted their future to match the efforts in which they put in. Now, what we can't control is how someone else feels. And we can't control the system, which is typically stacked against us. But what we can control is how we manage the finances that we do have. We can effectively build confidence and walk in abundance there is a smart way to move forward in financial freedom. If those things are something that you're interested in, I'm your girl. See, my passion is to help women devastated by the double Ds, divorce or death, who are unstable or unsure in their financial future, but want to live life confidently on their terms with financial independence and security, as well as peace. So if you are tired of the anxiety, the stress and feeling stuck, if the embarrassment and the shame are keeping you from confidently moving forward, and if you lack the money management skills as well as the financial decision-making so that you can have financial independence, I'd like to help. 
if you are looking for keys to pain-free financial stress, if you're looking for those effective tools that are going to transform you from wounded to confident, and if you're looking for the smart way to move forward in financial freedom, then I truly am your girl and this program may be for you. The program is called Prosperity After Pain. It's a financial transformation experience. And if you qualify, it might be the thing that is going to change the rest of your life. Your heart may be broke, but your bank account doesn't have to be. Contact me today for your free strategy call. You can find us online at h the number two h truth.org. At Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, we're helping believers live an abundant life based on God's word, standing on his promises, walking out his principles, sharing with God's people, serving as unto the Lord.